Hi and welcome back. In the previous tutorial, we have successfully built our to-do list. In this tutorial, we want to improve our user experience. Let's say that some loading takes a little bit more time. We want to show them a pending or some loading animation. And let's say that something goes wrong. At the moment, we are not showing anything to the users. So we want to improve this user experience and let's just do that. Go with Sloba. Okay, so the first thing that I want to add is actually loading state to our create task button. So what I want to do is when we click on this create task, I want to disable the button until our request get completed and I want to add some loading text. So let's do this. So let's go to our components folder and let's open our to do form. Let me close the explorer and inside of this component, I want to import use form status hook and using this hook we're going to have the state of our form. So let's import this hook, import use form status. And we're going to import this from react dash done like this. And now we can initialize this use form status hook and get the pending state from our form. But in order to use this hook, we need to make our component as a client. So on the top of the component, let's declare it as use client. And in order this to work, we also need to extract this button in a separate component. So we can use the same file, but we need to create a separate component. And let's name this one as submit btn. And this is just going to be a function that's going to return this button. So inside of this function, let's just return our button. And let me grab the code from the bottom here. And let's cut it and just paste it here. And now here we want to initialize our use form status. So let's call this hook use form status. And the result of this hook is going to be an object. And we want to destructure this object and take one property from it. And this is the pending state like this. Now let me save this to reformat the code. And what we can do now is easily add disabled state. So let's use disabled property and we can just assign it to our pending state. And what also we can do is we can update this text depending on what is the actual state for a form so let's check if pending is in process we want to say something like creating dot 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 and if it's completed we can just say the default create task like this and now let's include our submit button inside of our form here and in order to see what's happening let's add some delay so let's go to our this create task action and inside of our create task action here let's add some promise so something similar that we did on our previous tutorial let's await for new promise to complete and then inside of this promise we're just gonna add resolve but after set timeout function executes and we can call the resolve at the end and let's say that we have a delay of two seconds like this now we can save this and let's see what we get so let's go to a to-do form and let's save this as well and let's head over to our application and now let's open our application and let's say that we want to add new tasks let's say buy milk and when you click on create task, we can see that for two seconds, we are getting this creating text and that the button is disabled. Awesome. Now let's see how we can handle errors in our application. Now, in order to handle our errors, we will need another hook from React DOM. So let's import it here on top. And the name of this second hook is use form state. So what this hook does is basically we can provide it with the initial state and you can update the state depending on what is the actual result or our request. So let's create our initial state and inside of this initial state we can have one property, let's say a message and depending on the actual result of our request, we can set this to error or success. Now let's initialize our use state form hook. So inside of our to do form, let's call our hook. So use form state hook and this hook requires two arguments. The first one is the action that it needs to call. In this case, this is a create task. And the second one is initial state. And this hook returns an array. And inside of this array, we have two things. The first thing is the state that this hook returns back. And the second one is the action. We can call it as form action. So this is the action that we want to call once we submit our form. So let's use it instead of our create task here. So basically here we are calling this hook and we are providing this hook with two arguments, which is the create task action that it calls and the initial state, which gets updated and it turns back an updated state. So now using this state, we can display different UIs. So let's open an expression here and let's check for the state.message. And this is something that we're going to update in our create task in a moment. So if state message exists, let's add a paragraph. And inside of this paragraph, we just want to log the state.message like this to display and we can add some separation so let's add a class name and margin bottom two if there is no message we just want to return null like this now we want to update our create task action and to return a correct message depending on what happens with our promise so let's go to our create task action here 
and we want to wrap our code inside of our try catch block. The piece that we want to wrap in our try catch block is this one where we are actually calling this Prisma create. So let's create here try catch and I'm going to use the VS code completion and let's just take this entire code and put it inside of this try. And inside of this try, we want to return a successful message if this is a success. So return an object with a property of message. And we can say here success like this. And likewise, we can return an object with a message property. And here instead of success, we can say error like this. And let's make this one as uppercase as well. So it's more consistent. Now let's save this. And one additional thing that we need to update is since we are calling this from use form state. So this action is being called from use form state. We need to provide two arguments. So the first argument inside of our action is the actual preview state of the form. So prev state like this. And the second argument is this form data. We're actually not using the prev state, but you can provide a null or whatever you want. In this case, I'm just going to use this variable of prev state. And the second argument is the form data. Now we can save both of these files. Now let's get over to our app and let's say that we want to add a new task. So by soda, let's say, and let's create this task. And after two seconds, we should get a message of success. And this works as expected. But let's say that we have an error. So how can we simulate that is we can just go and mess up our code. So let's head over to our actions here. And for the Prisma, let's say that we add a table that we don't have. So let's say task. Let's save this and let's head over to our app once again. And let's try to add by... Actually, let's try to add once, once again. So let's click on create task and let's see what happens. After two seconds, we are actually getting this error message because there is no such table in our Prisma. And this is all for this tutorial. In the following tutorials, we will see how we can implement advanced input validation. So see you in the next one. And if you want to support my channel and get a full source code of every single video that I'm doing, feel free to check out patreon.com codebitsloba to get full access. See you there. Well, that's all for this video stopping by and don't forget to subscribe code with sloba thank you for watching the entire video to see more videos like this click here